Hi, I'm Stefan, the BMW DIY guy, and do you want to change the appearance of your brand new G87 in a really dramatic way? Let me show you how. All right, y'all, let's talk about the reasons why you might want to do this project. Now, the G87 has a huge number of design changes over the F87, and one of the biggest ways that it's different are, is the kidney grills and whole front column down through the radiators on the front of the car. Now, unless you have the sapphire black where you're gonna be black on black, you're not really gonna notice as much, but any of the other colors like my Toronto red, that lower part of the front air dam across the front is actually black, it's not color matched. Now, I got an opportunity to, to see a car with the painted IND front grill on, uh, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> I really wanna do that. Now, here's what we're talking about. So this is an OEM grill from IND. You order it from them. And when you order, you select exact, the exact paint that you want. Now, keep in mind, they also have two different versions. This is V1, where the paint stripe only goes just kind of straight across the front. They also have a V2 that goes all the way back. So it leaves actually the verticals still black, but, but actually it's painted all the way back to the back edge. I prefer this look in looking at the pictures and then the one car I saw, I really thought this was great. Now, this install is not hard at all. It's only just a few little of those little plastic expanding rivets across the bottom. And we'll slide this piece out and you can put the new one in. This is a great way to individualize your car. And if you want to change the style and that visual appearance a little bit, this is a great way to do it. Now, one quick thing, always remember all the parts and tools you'll need will be listed in the video description below. Make sure to check that out. I get that question all the time. Where do I get the parts? Check there. All right, let's jump into the front of the car and let's get this done. All right, so I'm tight and close here so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So this expands here across the front we put the new one on, it's gonna be red all the way across. Now, a couple of things here really quick. This is an easy install. We're gonna use the new one here as an example. Let's look here really quick. So you can see there are these little clips and they have these little hooks that snap up into, into your fender here. So what we're gonna be doing is, is depressing these and to get these hooks down and out. And I wanted to show you on the new one so you get a sense of what you're gonna be working with back here along this plastic line. Now, underneath as well, we've got a whole series of little plastic expanding rivets. Now I'm gonna grab my camera and I'm gonna show you the underside here in a second, but it really is only a half a dozen or so, a little bit less, and we're gonna pull all those out. Then this piece will swing loose, it will swing out and then we can start to get to all these little clips. I'll walk you through this whole process, it's really easy. Now also be careful, and I'm probably gonna say this more than once, you've got your two PDC sensors here as well that are plugged in from behind. So once we get this loose, be very careful swinging it off and we're gonna be unplugging the sensors. I'll show you that as soon as we get there, but let me show you this underside first. All right, y'all, so let's go ahead and look here at this bottom edge. Now, mine is a model year 24. Uh, there might be some slight differences in the models as they move forward. As you can see, this is one of those typical plastic expanding rivets where you're gonna take either a screwdriver or one of those little Y plastic trim tools to pry the center out, and then this plug will come out. Now, what I do notice, and there's six all the way across, is I've got one, two, three, four, 10 millimeter screws that are, that are set in here. I have seen examples where they've been a, these plastic rivets the whole way across, so you might have one or the other, okay? So go ahead and back this pin out, and there's a plastic one at the other end as well. So go ahead and back this out, take out the four 10 millimeters, and go ahead and get the plastic rivet at the other end, and then this front edge is going to be free, and then we're gonna get up here and we're gonna look on how we start to get all of those little plastic clips out. All right. So now that the, all of the screws and, and uh, plastic plugs are out of the bottom, you can pull this front edge free. Now, a couple of things you're gonna wanna notice here really quickly. If you notice, there actually is structures back behind here. So you're not gonna wanna be grabbing on and pulling because you're gonna be getting par other parts of the bumper as well. Now, the other thing is I had on this side, it was really tight. Now, the driver's side on the other side popped free really easily. This side was really, really tight. So I was very careful and very patient to get this front edge free. When I did pop it free, I did get one of those little plastic expanding tabs um, right here to pop free. Now, yours may not do the same, but this is where I'm, I'm really gonna advocate patience and caution. Because the last thing you wanna do on an upgrade or something you're changing is do damage. And now this is all soft plastic, it's all painted. 
So your ability to tear this up is really high. <laughs> okay, and that's the last thing we wanna do. So one thing I'm gonna recommend, and you're gonna see me put it on here in a second, is I'm gonna put painter's tape all along this edge of, the, of my painted side, because the last thing I wanna do is tear this up. Now the old one here on this side, I don't care about as much, obviously, as I'm pulling it off, but who knows? I mean, maybe I'll put it back someday, or you know, I don't know, I'll sell it, I, I don't know. So I don't wanna tear this up either. So at a bare minimum, I want to protect the painted side for sure. I'm always gonna use plastic tools. So for example, um, you're gonna to wanna to use a plastic trim kit and be really, really patient as you get in here, right? As you start to try to work at these, at, at these little plastic tabs. Now, the other thing that you can do, it's really nice having the new one, instead of just guessing and being like, ah, oh, maybe there's a tab here, or maybe it's here, you can hold up the new one and go, okay, so there's a tab here, hold up the new one, the next tab is here, and you can know exactly where it is. You could even use you know, a tiny little bit of tape to place it right there and say, that's where the next tab is. So you're not digging and digging and digging. So I'm really gonna advocate a lot of patience. I'm not gonna dig at this very much right now because like I said, I'm, I'm gonna put some painter's tape on, but you're really gonna have to be patient as you get these out. You can also look at the new one. Like I said, I've got an exposed tab right here and it's got this little locking tab that needs to be pressed downward downward for the tab to come out, right? So you're gonna really, you're gonna be trying to get in and over the top of it to press down. So then the tab will start to slip. Now, the one other thing you can do that's gonna be impossible to show on, on camera is you can potentially get your fingers back behind here a little bit. There's, there's some uh, rubber shielding and the like, but if I reach in here gently, I can actually get my fingers on this tab right here. And I can actually feel that little locking tab. So I can potentially be using my trim tool on one side and feeling with my fingers on the other to try to get that tab to depress and come out. Um, let me show you as I walk through this. Um, I'm not gonna show it all because it's just gonna be the same process that I just described. But patience, absolute patience as you do this. Be careful as you do it. Like I said, I'm gonna put some tape on. All right, so let me get that tape on and I'll show you about halfway through what it looks like. All right, so I wanted to show you about halfway through the process here. You can see I'm about halfway across. I'm using the original or the new piece to be able to guess right where these tabs are. And reaching behind, it really, really helps. So, I mean, I can find this next tab right here by just reaching back behind. I can even get my fingers on a little bit of that locking tab and I can depress down a little bit, right? Now, the other thing, if you notice, what I, what I don't wanna have happen is, is I'm fiddling with the next clip. I don't want the previous one to snap back into place because you're, you're moving and applying pressure. So what I found is that I just put a plastic trim tool into the previous location and it keeps the piece from locking back into place. The other tool that I found very, very useful is this very, very narrow plastic trim tool because I'll, I'll reach back behind, I'll find the little locking tab. So that's right where my opening is. And then I will just very carefully slide this in just like that, and you should have heard that pop. As you can see, it popped it out really, really nicely. So this next one is out here as I, as I do this. So then I'll take my trim tool, I'll slide it down, slide it in there to make sure that it doesn't slide back in, okay? And I really only have like one, two, three left to do as I work my way across. And then putting the new one on is just gonna be the reverse order. I'll show that to you, but it's really simple, okay? So go ahead and work through the rest. I'm gonna pop the rest of the clips, and then I'm gonna show you taking your PDC sensors, which are off camera, sort of, <laughs> sorry. This one still is, um, but I'll show you how to take your PDC, PDC sensors off. All right, so a really hard camera angle. <laughs> But your PDC sensor, you really have, there's two different ways to take this off. There's the plug itself, which I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'll show you on the plug on the other side, or I'll show you when I take this off. So there's really two different ways to unplug your PDC, PDC sensors. So the first way is the plug itself. There's a little gray pin that you're gonna wanna pull up, and then you can pull the plug off the sensor itself. Now the other option, and I, I've, I've worked with these sensors a bunch, so I'm familiar on how they clip in here. There are these little Y, little bracket. So the sensor itself snaps into a bracket that holds onto two little clips. So if you reach down and you feel on the sensor itself that there are two little Y arms on it and you can feel it as, it start, as, as you gently, and I stress gently press on it, as you can see it's starting to drop out. I just very gently with a finger on either side opened up those Ys and it comes right off. 
okay? So you can see that there are these little fingers right here and right here on either side. And there's the gray plug. So if you wanted to take it out plug style, you'd reach back behind, you'd lift up this little plug, or this little lock, excuse me, and then the plug will come right off. But as you can tell, that is a really stiff plug. So I actually find it a little bit easier to actually deal with the little Y arms in the bracket. And I'll rearrange my camera so I can show you here in a second. But this just snaps into these little Y arms on either side and I find it easier. And again, I really wanna stress you have to be gentle. Okay, so let me turn my camera here a little bit. Let's see if we can get a, a better angle here and a better view. But if you look, you can see right here, there's a little kind of, you can see it's kind of soft plastic and soft plastic. So those are the little Ys with a little notch in them. They're hanging on to the sensor. So if you very gently press those out, the sensor will come out and that's how you're gonna put it back in. You're gonna put it back in the same orientation and press it down until the little clips on the sensor fit in, into these little arms. I wanna stress this. This is one of the few places you can screw this up if, if you're not careful. You press on these really hard, Ugh, snap them, you can snap them off and that's a bummer. I've done that once before on a previous bumper, okay? So be very, very gently. These only take just a little bit of pressure and then your sensor will come right out, okay? So let's go ahead and get the new one back on. All right, so one quick thing before we put this back on. This is actually a rubber collar around the top of your sensor. So this collar, if I press on it, can come off or it can sit a little funny. This is what helps seal it into your bumper uh, or your, your vent cover in this case, you know, really cleanly, okay? So make sure that that is still on nice and even and straight. You also wanna put the sensor back in the same orientation. Now, as this goes on, it's gonna be hard to see because it's gonna be back behind, but you're just gonna wanna take it and guide it right back into place and make sure just like that, and hopefully, hopefully you guys heard that little click. So there actually was a little click as both of those arms snapped into place. Now the other thing I always check is I always look here in the front and make sure that that little rubber gasket is not twisted or sticking out or anything funny. And then I also look back behind, feel back behind, and make sure that the sensor, aha, see? One of the arms wasn't locked down because when I pressed on it, the bottom, the bottom arm on this side locked into place, I could feel it. And now it looks correctly flush. My little rubber gasket is nice and flush as well. And then I very gently kind of pull, I, I either press or pull up on, on those little arms a little bit just to make sure that the sensor is in nice and firmly, okay? Now my camera angle is really tight because I wanted to show you that sensor. Now, but what you're gonna wanna do, of course, is go do it on the other side, which I haven't done yet. And then you're just gonna take it and just press this back into place. Just, just snap it right back in, really super simple. This will all snap back it right back into the same spots. And then we're gonna crawl underneath and put, and put the plastic rivets back in and those four screws, if you have the screws, and you're pretty much good to go. So let me get this snapped into place, I'll show you the rest. All right, so as you can see, it's snapped into place. If you use painter's tape, you might wanna take it off before you put the new one on. <laughs> I got a little bit of tape left behind that gave me a little bit of a challenge to get it out of there without scraping my paint. It came out okay, but it, that's fine. So when you, when you do snap this back into place, just make sure to snap this lower lap, lip back into place. This rubber gasket kind of grommet here that helps focus air up into, up into your coolers. Make sure that that's all in place and nothing is out of place. Okay, so go ahead and crawl underneath. Go ahead and put those plastic rivets in on either end and those 10 millimeters across the bottom and you're all done. Good job. All right, also go ahead and clean up and put your tools away. You can tell this is not a hard project to do. This is something you can do really simply in just a few minutes and it can dramatically change the appearance of your car and it's something, like I said, the first time I saw it, I knew I wanted to do it. So thank you to IND for making such a fantastic product and their paint matching is excellent. Thank you to Keys Motorsports as being one of the best places to buy IND products through. That's where I always go first. I really appreciate you watching. Please make sure to click like and subscribe. It honestly makes a difference to my channel. I have a ton of new content coming really soon that I cannot wait to show you. And it's the best way to get notified every time I have new content. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you on my next video.